introduction, um, the purpose of sampling is to obtain a representative sample of the whole sample that can be taken from the lab for chemical analysis and the result obtained can be accurate. For example, um, from the picture, um, there's a population of humans that needed for investigation. But we only take a few of them, which is the sample of members of the population as a sampling to get the information. Next, the description of the sampling is, sampling is the most critical aspect of an analysis. Also, the significance and accuracy of the measurements can be limited by the sampling process. Um, so, the next slide is type of sample. There are three types of sample, which is representative sample, um, the gross sample, and the last one is an encode. So, for the representative sample, representative sample is the first step of an analysis. And the second point is the gross sample, which is the gross sample is the several uh, portion of the sample, and this is reduced to provide a lab sample. And the last one is an aliquot, which is this sample is taken for analysis sample. Next is the theory of sampling. So for theory of sampling, the liquid sample are homogeneous and are much easier to be sampled. The second point is gross sample can be relatively small. Um, the reason why the gross sample are small so that they can get easier to be analyzed. And the last point is if liquid are not homogeneous, they can be shaken and sampled immediately. Last for my part is sampling liquid. So sampling depends on the types of liquid. And there are two types of liquid, which is the large volume of liquid, um, large stationary liquid and biological fluid. For large volume of liquid, it is really impossible to make. Um, even a pipe after passing through a pump when they have undergone the most thorough mixing. So for the second point is large uh, stationary liquids such as lake and rivers. So the constituents of liquids may vary according to the depth. If water sample is taken from a river, so uh, the water sample is collected at the surface of the river, middle of the river and also the bottom of the river bed. And this is called as a tentative sampler, which is um, a device for an aliquot at a different level. The last point is biological fluids. So the timing of sampling biological fluids is very important. Such as if a doctor want to do a blood uh, composition test, they must be during, before and after. Now, I want to talk about the application of sampling liquid. Our application for the sampling liquid is the river pollution. There is oil from the industry that flow into the river. So, common method for monitoring and controlling river pollution include the establishment of water pollution monitoring stations located along the river. The point where each station is located that is known as the sampling point is very important if you want to obtain representative information about industrial and domestic pollution throughout the river, not just at the sampling point. Next, the type of liquid that we want to investigate is river equal to large stationary liquid. That's why we have to um, get the point of each river that is called a representative information. Hey everyone, I like to discuss the proper way to sample water. The beauty of this approach lies in its universal application. By following this simple yet effective technique, we can ensure accurate and representative water sampling. Regardless of the water source or location, submerging the bottles below the water surface to a desired depth holds allowing us to assess various water bodies quality and potential contaminants. So, let's get started. Whether they are sampling water from a remote lake or a bustling city river, scientists follow the same procedure to maintain consistency and comparability across different locations. Firstly, our task is to observe and document our findings. Take note of any animal presence, type of plants and the stability of the pond or stream bank. 
Additionally, make a record of the day's weather. It is best to postpone our visit for another day if it is rainy, as precipitation can affect the water's quality. It is essential to identify the direction of water flow and collect a sample upstream where the fresh water is coming in and carrying any contamination away. Always keep in mind to sample upstream for accurate results. Secondly, rinse the sample bottle three times with our sample water to ensure it is clean. Even if it came from a lab, it is best to rinse it three times just to be sure. This way, you eliminate any potential contaminants like soap residue or dust. Next, keep the lid on and submerge the sample bottle below the water surface to the middle depth. To ensure an accurate sample, submerging the sample bottle below the water surface with the lid cap on is important. Avoid scooping from the surface as surface tension and protein contaminants may affect the sample's accuracy. Instead, keep the lid on, tilt the bottle upward to release any trapped air and then fill it up. Once you collected the sample, it is essential to dump any excess downstream if any contaminants are collected and repeat style trim. This is to prevent contamination from affecting your water sample. Remember, we want a clean and uncontaminated sample. After taking the sample, rinse the bottle again using the same method we discussed earlier and this ensures the bottle remains clean for future sampling. As a step, ensure to label your sample bottle with crucial details, including the location date and specific tests you require the lab to carry out. Proper handling of the sample is crucial now that you have it. Finally, it is important to store and keep the sample refrigerated at approximately 4 degrees Celsius in order to preserve its integrity. This precaution prevents microbial growth and ensures the sample remains stable during transportation to the laboratory. And that's it! By following this simple step, you can ensure that your water samples are accurate and contamination free. Remember, proper sampling is crucial for reliable results. Oh, also, oh, also, I wanted to share with you this amazing resource I found called Conserve Interactive Ritual Labs. It's a resource that provides interactive ritual labs for water quality testing. You can learn all about the different sampling methods and test procedures for detecting water quality indicators. It is perfect for students, researchers, or anyone interested in the topic. It's like having a virtual lab right at your fingertips. And the best part is, is that you can access all the virtual labs for free. I highly recommend you to check it out. The example of river pollution sampling is the Citerium River. The Citerium River is the water source for the Chattilho Reservoir, Indonesia's largest reservoir at 3 billion cubic meters of storage capacity. The reservoir supplies water for Bandung in 18% of the water supply for the capital. A study conducted by the Blacksmith Institute in 2013 found that level of lead in the Citerium River reached 1,000 times worse than the US standard for drinking water. With silver pollution from lead, aluminum, manganese, and iron since 2002, the Citerium has never met the water quality standard of government regulation number 82 of 2001 on water quality management and water pollution control. The Citerium River primary source of pollution is domestic waste in household waste water and garbage, industrial waste, livestock waste, and fishery waste. This is the example of sampling at Citerium River. Photo number one show an activity stick water sample to test its toxicity in the Citerium River near Jalan Laswi Raja Majalaya Bandung Regency, West Jawa Province. While photo number two show an activity stick a water sample in Trikijang River, a tributary of Citerium River near Jalan Pancasila Dalam Rancakek Bandung Regency, West Jawa Province. Photo number 3 is an activity show water sample to be tested for its toxicity in Chihalbi River, a tributary of Citerium River near Jalan Raya Chipenwe, Padalarang, West Bandung Regency, West Java Province. And photo number 4 show that Greenpeace activities take a water sample from an outlaw pipe to check the toxicity of the water in Chitamyang River a tributary of Citerium River Chilekong, Chadiluhur Purwakarta Regency, West Java Province. 
In conclusion, it is evident that the application of basic analytical chemistry in our daily life and environmental monitoring is crucial. By implementing proper sampling techniques, we can ensure the collection of accurate and representative samples, which allows us to assess the presence of substances that impact water quality and contribute to environmental conservation efforts. Remember, each sample tells a story about the health of our rivers. By following the steps we have discussed today, we can obtain trustworthy data that aid in environmental monitoring, research, and conservation efforts. Its ability to provide reliable data empowers us to make informed decisions, mitigate risks, and protect both consumers and the environment. Therefore, embracing the power of analytical chemistry can foster sustainable practices and ensure the well-being of both industry and the environment. Together, let's continue to explore and protect the beauty of our rivers through responsible water sampling practices. Thank you for joining us on this journey and don't forget to like our video if you enjoyed. Bye!